Hi, everybody. I'm Valerie Sayer of Nutrition Connection Balance, and today we'll be talking about hormone health, and we will be doing a quiz. So I will go over five questions in the beginning and then five questions in the middle and make sure you have those answers because I find people, if they're paying attention and they can fill things in, they have a little more fun, they learn better that way. So if you don't know me, I'm a registered and licensed dietitian. I'm a hormone therapist. I got my hormone experience as the director of a compounding pharmacy in Schaumburg, Illinois. Um, and I kept my pharmacy registered technician license up for 20 years. I actually just let it lapse because I haven't used uh, that particular uh, license anymore. I did a medical nutrition internship at the Cleveland Clinic. My degree is food and nutrition science from Florida State University. And I'm a certified medical exercise specialist, a Reiki master for over 20 years. I've done two natural bodybuilding shows, three full marathons and multiple smaller races. I'm a mom of five, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm someone that really believes in empowering people with individuality as well as energy medicine. I'm the author of two books, Eight Ways to Lose Your Blubber, and a new one this year called Soul Soaring. You can find both on Amazon or you can learn more on our website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com or soulsoaringbook.com. But we're here to talk about you today. And so one of the things we're going to do is we are going to be talking about hormone health, one of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about hormones, females, adrenals, males, of course, also vitamin D3, therapies, foundational and nutritional proof. So here's the first five questions for you to think about, write down, and then make sure you have the answers later. How many hours does it take to actually change gene expression in extreme environments? That means good or bad environment. What are the two main adrenal hormones? And what type of hormone is most bioavailable? How many estrogens are there? And what is one way to increase testosterone levels with many additional health benefits? So first of all, before we go into hormones, I always like to make sure you understand why I became a registered dietitian first. One is you're gonna eat your whole life. Two is we have a lot of myths and misconceptions. We think disease is normal. And even when we talk about mutations, genetic mutations, only 10% are actually caused by inherited changes, Lynch syndrome and a few of the breast cancer genes. That still does not mean you have to have the disease or express that. There's random errors that can happen from smoking, from poor environment, as well as just bad luck. And then there's, of course, the biggest thing, which is exposure to things that we put in our mouth and in our environment. So keep that in mind as we go along. We also want to be really encouraging that when we look at epigenetics in cancer, epigenetics can alter and lead to genome instability, DNA rupture, and the promotion of uncontrolled growth. So that means that when you get soup and phytochemicals, when you have a pro environment that's very healthy, whether we're talking about psychological, biochemical, physical, those alterations and expressions can be kept turned off. Even we show that epigenetic changes are reversible. So that means even if you have certain things that are starting to grow or you have a condition, that means you can change it oftentimes. So that's really encouraging. If you don't believe me, one of my favorite studies is the NASA identical twin study where Mark and Scott Kelly were studied in extreme environments. And of course, you think about going up to space in an extreme environment, but one of the things in, in an extreme environment like space is everything is controlled. That means blood pressure, exercise, um, you know, stress, outside stress, exactly what they're eating. And what was so interesting is that when they looked at them and when the twins had looked at time on earth and time in space, as soon as they stepped back on earth, it only took 48 hours to start showing negativity from gene expression because there's stress, there's TV, there's poor diet, there's thinking about what the family needs, you know, did the dog crap on the, on the crop carpet, all those things, you know? So epigenetics, remember, is how nutrition, behavior, and environment changes how your body reads your DNA, and it is reversible. So it's very exciting. If you're really into any kind of things where you have really a strong belief system that, you know, you can't change things, then you might want to look up the study in epigenetics nutrigenomics, those are just different words for the same things. And just remember again, that we really have to question our belief system. Beliefs does not mean it's true. Beliefs are carved from things we hear on TV, from our culture, from things we read in a newspaper or Instagram. That doesn't mean it's a fact. So really challenge your belief systems. 
unexpected. So illness does not come out of the blue. Most people think it does. It's amazing to me where someone said, well, I had I didn't have breast cancer last year, this year I did on my mammogram. Well, that's detection, not prevention. They are developed from small daily sins against nature. When enough sins are accumulated, illness will suddenly appear. And that's Hippocrates, who has been around a long time. So when we talk about hormones, keep those in mind. You're going to see how I weave everything together, I promise, that when we look at hormones, hormones can be proteins or peptides, such as a growth hormone or small molecules, such as thyroid or steroids or cortisol. Keep these things in mind. Notice the protein or peptide, the small molecule, and the steroid. How and where are hormones? Hormones are in the blood, urine, and saliva. Some are best by blood, like thyroid. Some are best by saliva, like female hormones and adrenals. And some are best by urine, like free cortisone, melatonin. So again, things are different depending on what we're looking at. And the hormones are made in one cell and they act in another. So when we look, one of our biggest determining factors of our health these days are stress. And I don't mean if you're happy in your life, I mean stress. Pumping gas, not washing your hands, a poor diet, not high fruit and vegetables, smoking, uh, not getting enough activity, not getting out in nature, having chronic stress. You know, you become the top five people you hang around with, jobs that you don't like, all those different things, medications, all have side effects. So when we look at stress, they are huge. So we're gonna put that first in the hormones we're gonna talk about is the adrenals. The adrenals are located above the kidneys. I'll show you in the next few slides. And they respond to stress, any kind of stress, a medical, emotional, physiological, biochemical, all of it. And adrenals are essential for the resilience to rebound from stress. Look at the two main adrenal hormones. Okay, cortisol and DHEA. The two main adrenal hormones affect carbo carbohydrate metabolism, that includes diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, inflammation, which turns on all disease. If you looked at my uh, health literacy lecture, you definitely want to go back to that on the YouTube channel, Valerie Early Sayer, and take a look at that one because it'll explain a lot about in systemic inflammation, musculoskeletal changes, bone turnover, like bone health, muscle integrity, connective tissue, metabolism, weight, body composition, protein turnover, our gut lining, endocrine functioning from thyroid, pancreas, insulin, to ovarian function, neural health, which affects our cognitive well-being, our moods and our behavior, and certainly detoxification, which is something that is extremely important today because we are just bombarded by toxins like glyphosate, like secondhand smoke, like food additives. Um, so we really have got to be looking at those things. So remember, when we look at question number one, how many hours does it take to change gene expression in extreme environments? Only 48 hours, two days. What are the two main adrenal hormones? We're on question number two, cortisol and DHEA. So the adrenal hormones, as you can see, are located above the kidneys. We're going to talk about DHEA specifically right now, dehydroepiandrostyone. When it's low, it can affect fatigue, muscle maintenance, depression, low libido, cognitive changes, and poor metabolism. When it's high, it can have increased anxiety, sleep disturbances, salt cravings, and again, most of the time when someone's high, they either have extreme anxiety, we're talking panic attacks, as well as certain medications or overzealous nervous system, or we're talking chronic stress, years of stress, of large stressors, and over medication um, from DHEA, which I see all the time since people sometimes think they get it over the counter and they don't test properly. So be very careful with that. So that's one of the main adrenal hormones. When we talk about chronic stress, it directly affects the other adrenal hormone, even more called cortisol. Cortisol changes as the day goes on. Our cortisol should be like a cell phone, right? We plug it in at night, we should wake up with the highest cortisol, and then it goes down as the day goes on, just like our cell phone as we use it. So what happens is chronic stress disrupts this. You can start low, then be horribly tired, can't get up, or have apathy and depression and low motivation, or you could have high and feel right away that your heart is racing, that you are nervous. You're already worried about 1,400 things that are going to happen that day. So, and then we can also see it be too high or low or up and down or what I call erratic, which is one of the things I see the most high, low, high, low, where again, that is just awful. People feel awful. They feel anxious and depressed. 
So when we look, cortisol also directly affects insulin, metabolic syndrome, and glucose. So we want to be very, very careful when we're looking at cortisol. So when we look at cortisol and DHA, it's best by saliva. And even the adrenal diseases, which are very rare, I've only had two of each ever in over 20 years of experience, Cushing's and Addison's disease is very, very rare. And it's almost always diagnosed and it's diagnosed by saliva and urine testing, by the way, not blood testing. So blood testing is really not helpful at all in cortisol and DHA, the main two adrenal stress hormones. But by saliva, it really shows us what's happening between now and the last six months and up to two years if it's your first testing. It looks at the free levels that affect how you feel every day, and it's used to carry out stress and resilience and help with your energy. It affects daily functioning, moods, resilience from any illness, surgery, or when you have to recoup from a big trauma, even an emotional one. So a cortisol is too high, there could be anxiety, night waking, trouble falling asleep, heart palpitations, um, all sorts of other things with body fat, higher waist circumference, even in a petite person, uh, higher insulin, higher hemoglobin A1C, prediabetes, and systemic inflammation, which is so vital again, because that's what turns all disease on. When cortisol is low, there's fatigue, depression, low motivation, cognitive issues, poor metabolism, and a much lower immune system, which is of course so important today. And you cannot guess, like I said, I would say the biggest uh, panel that I see and with people with adrenal issues are erratic, which means too light, too low and too high, and maybe a few normals in there. So you can't just go take something over the counter or take some drink or herb. You've got to measure cortisol at least four times throughout the day. If someone's really having trouble, I really, in all my hormone clinics, I, my female and male hormone clinics, I'm very thorough. Besides looking at the adrenals and the female hormones, I actually measure for free cortisol, for free cortisone, for free melatonin and creatinine. These help me determine what's going on the last one to 12 weeks that got your adrenal organ into trouble. So I can be much more specific with the therapies and lifestyle changes that you need. So those are really important. So how do we actually recover from adrenal issues outside of herbs as well as managing stress? Well, some of that is absolutely why I became a registered dietitian again. It's whole food. It's nutrition. Food is something you're going to do your entire life, no matter who you are, no matter where your life is, no matter what your financial status is, no matter what your educational status is, we all have to eat. And I like the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 clean, 20% fun. And hopefully the 20% fun isn't so extreme with way too much alcohol or too much sugar if you're diabetic, that type of thing. So we want to be reasonable in that 80-20 rule. If you have something very serious go on, I really say 95 and only 5% fun. You really want to be cautious then so that you can start reversing. And remember, it only takes two days to start having those changes. Even if you don't feel it, physiologically, things are changing. We want to avoid or limit caffeine over exercising, like boot camps, that type of thing. And again, it, it depends on what your adrenal levels are, where I get more specific, and alcohol. We want quality sleep, good six to nine hours of deep sleep, and it's really good to go to bed by 10 p.m. and be up by 6 or 7 a.m. And keep evenings, two to three hours before you go to bed, low key, low lights, music, reading books. We don't have a TV in our bedroom. Again, all these different things, communication, taking a, looking at the stars, you know, really having meditation quiet time since our days are so busy and so full of talking and, and problem solving and really, really we're tired at night. So a few of the things, if you have adrenal issues that I might recommend, and again, I only recommend it ever if you test, is orally by DHEA. There's either creams or pills. There's also liquids, but I'm very cautious with that. I have to know a lot about a person and see if it's not going up. That's the only time I will actually use a liquid because almost every person I see that comes in on some kind of liquid is overdosed because they won't test properly or try other areas first. So we know that the cream is the most bioavailable and capsules are very bioavailable for DHEA also. What's nice, they're very inexpensive. Sometimes when people are on steroids or have a lot of medication or other binding issues that we won't go into um, today, it, they might need a topical agent. So, and so for men, you know, typically five to 75 milligrams, you can hear again how widespread that is. And for females, it's typically five to 25. 
What's really important why you should not take it without needing it is DHEA in women when you take it almost always converts to testosterone. So I have seen well-meaning people give someone DHEA because they have certain symptoms in women or they're a certain age, and it's directly caused not just high testosterone, but insulin resistance and prediabetes, even in very fit people. So please don't take it without testing. Another thing that's very popular for the adrenals, you can see it on every commercial, I won't name names, but I know you know them as well as different uh, social media channels are adaptogens, and it is a bane of my existence. You should not take adaptogens without knowing your adrenal results. We see them in green powders. We're seeing them in drinks. We're seeing them at shake shops. And again, let's say we look at maca root. It's an incredibly well-known herb for andropause, which means as men lose testosterone with aging, women are going through perimenopause, even other hormonal symptoms like low libido. But for heaven's sakes, let's say your testosterone is high, you should not take maca root. So maca root in all the different herbs, alethro, rhodiola, magolia, ashwagandha, adrenal parts, nourish and affect the adrenals, but some make them go up, some make them go down. So you want to be very, very careful what you take. Um, you know, that's why you test with someone like me that's had thousands and thousands of patients, and I can usually get it down to the top three. So if you're not responding to one or having side effects with one, we can get you on the right one. And then, of course, retesting is vital. So please don't take these herbs without testing. I want to say that one of the beautiful things is that exercise is medicine. I just finished a very uh, high-end uh, continuing education program. And they showed and talked about cortisol a lot. And this again was just about exercise because high levels of cortisol and excess cortisol and chronic stress causes high cortisol. And the thing is, it again releases blood sugar. So it affects insulin and prediabetes. It increases inflammation and it causes organ fat to accumulate. Even if you're thin, it can accumulate around the organs, which are the most dangerous. So the good news is exercise. You can even do it for free is lowers inflammation, counters the effect of stress, but you have to do more than the bare minimum. They're really finding even the steps are 7,500 to 16,000 steps a day. And then of course, we're gonna talk about different forms. And of course, anything's better than nothing, but you again wanna to talk to your doctor if you're out of shape, and then we'll talk about different specific things that are helpful. I have many videos on our website and other things that talk about this. So when we look, there are three estrogens, not one. So often I have someone say, well, I'm on an estrogen. Well, which one? And so again, there's three. So if we look at the question number three, what type of hormone is most bioavailable? That's topical and creams. And how many estrogens are there? There's three. There's estrone E1, estradiol E2, and estriol E3. And again, estradiol is the one most people are usually given, whether it's a oral contraceptive like birth control or a hormonal cream or a uh, patch or um, also an oral pill. And that's because estradiol has over 400 functions. So almost always it makes something better, but of course it can make something worse. And again, we don't look at often test the other uh, estrogens, which is just a shame because they directly influence what therapy really you should be on as well as your symptoms, including your age. And if you have a menstrual cycle or not, we know that when we look at Premarin synthetic, it is actually uh, pregnant mare uh, urine. And I'm not a fan of synthetic. I think there are always places for everything. So I never say all or nothing because I have had two patients in 20 years that no matter what, they did better on synthetic and very small amounts, but they test every six months and they have a gynecologist examining them. And then I'm looking at their levels to make sure we keep them safe. And I never say any hormones are safe. Always, it has to be individualized. And again, and look at your risk and what form and what type and so on. And then we know there's different therapies. There's bioidentical therapy that are oral or creams. There is over the counter like herbs. And then of course there's synthetic, which in the World Health Initiative study in the 2000, early 2000s show that all of them increase breast cancer, stroke, as well as all sorts of other diseases. And they're right there in the uh, information that you get from the pharmaceutical company. 
or when you pick up your medication. So it's amazing to me when people have, they'll say they want to do these herbs or or certain things, yet they're taking synthetic hormones that right there has a condition they've already had or risk factor. So you've got to be really savvy and you can take care of symptoms through over-the-counter lifestyle. And sometimes you need bioidentical hormones. Everybody's different. There's all sorts of hormonal symptoms, of course. As I mentioned, there's over 400 just for estradiol. There's four or five typically for estriol, such as vaginal dryness, urinary changes. We'll talk about those. But you can see there can be all different kinds of stressors, irritation, constipation with diarrhea, you know, more the IBS. There can be weight gain, decreased libido, depression, headaches, change in blood pressure, all sorts of things. So it's really, we know that hormones dictate our bodies. When we look at men, estradiol is actually the one that's most important that I monitor a lot. And I'm starting to monitor progesterone. We'll talk about that in the next slide. But estradiol, when it's too high, is one of the things I look for eight to 10 years before prostate cancer, heart health, and higher risk. So again, it's more of a preventative level in men. And low dose, uh, certain prescriptions can cause high estradiol overdosed on testosterone, which is the number one cause I'm seeing. Again, what happens is they get a level, they feel great and they don't retest or they keep getting higher and higher and that will cause estradiol to accumulate and cause all sorts of problems. And then of course, toxins. The best treatments are pro-hormone balancing, the name change there, and it's a particular herb I'll use with men. And again, your level of estradiol helps me know how much you need uh, with other risk factors like your PSA. Juice Plus, we'll be talking about that a lot with how it affects different things like phytochemicals for hormone receptors. You want to include a vegetable with every meal. You want to identify any toxins and detoxify them. And then you absolutely want optimal essential fatty acids. Those are in every hormone pathway and affect all inflammatory diseases. And we talked about that in the health literacy lecture. So again, go back to Valerie Early Sayers YouTube or nutritionconnectionbalance.com to watch that. And then you want to have body fat loss more than weight loss. And then we may need adrenal balancing because that directly influenced testosterone and estradiol in men and in women. So we look at progesterone. It's something that I look mainly at with women. And there's just a, you know, a very small amount they need uh, if they've had a hysterectomy or or um, you know, postmenopausal, but they still need it. Progesterone affects sleep, it affects libido, it affects your well-being, it also affects your risk of endometrial and breast cancer, including moods. But the interesting thing, it increases the breakdown of fat and it also protects the endometrial wall and is essential for maintaining a pregnancy. And the other thing that we know now is that men, when progesterone gets high, it can be a very early risk of heart disease, even in a very young man. And I have not had, I, I mean, I've had one or two cases in the last 20 years, I've had two this year. So it's really changing because our levels of stress have just accentuated as well as all the things that are available out there from prescriptions to over-the-counter things that are people just picking up and not testing adequately and individualizing. So you always want to individualize and we want to look at progesterone and their synthetic or again, there is bioidentical. And of course, adrenals affect progesterone levels. So sometimes when I work with young people with nutrition and adrenals, we get that better. They don't even need progesterone. So that's very important. So when we look again, there's different types of therapies. There's prescription synthetic hormones, there's bioidentical, and there's herbs and amino acids. All of them can be helpful. And hopefully you want to do the things that have the least risk as well as individualized. And a lot of times people say, no, 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 it's fine. I'm taking progestin and I'm, I'm doing these other things that the doctor said was safe. And I said, you know, it's not that they're not, not all of them can be safe if you're tested properly. However, if you can match your body's own receptors, recite natural human, it's going to fit like a key. You know, even if you have two keys that look the same, they don't open the lock. So we want to have things that look like our receptors, and I don't like the word natural, but I'm going to use it here, that fit into our body's receptors. That includes food, that includes herbs, that includes water, that includes amino acids that are part of proteins. Okay, so we want to use things that are safer if possible. The great news is, is that number five, what is one way to increase testosterone levels with many additional health benefits, and that is strength training. The steroid, so testosterone is a steroid hormone. Ovaries provide half 
of testosterone in women. And the therapies that work best for testosterone in women are strength training and DHEA. I rarely give testosterone and I rarely use other forms like pellets or so on because it makes people super high and then drops them. And that is what we don't want with hormones. We want stability, okay? The men with testosterone, it's a steroid hormone. It's their master hormone. It is made from cholesterol. It's mainly produced in the testes, small amount in the adrenals, and low levels can cause muscle loss, apathy, low motivation, low libido, less orgasms, intensity, and sensitivity, erection changes in capability, urinary changes, bone loss, high levels, which is why we want to be very careful how we use testosterone in men and women are diabetes, high insulin, moodiness, aggression, depression, increased risk of heart disease, which is our number one risk for male or female anyway. So if we're going to say, don't be adding risk to it. Blood clots, hyperlipidemia, which is high cholesterol, high hypertension, which is high blood pressure, liver disease, prostate enlargement, and insomnia. So we want to make sure we're balanced properly. Um, when we use to start, when I work with women, again, I usually use herbs, DHEA and strength training. With men, they may need stronger herbs. So we'll use different ones. But again, it depends on what their estradiol level is and their testosterone level is my saliva. And then we'll use herbs with testosterone sometimes. And typically, if you use any topical, which I use the least because it contaminates the whole house, is you want to always wear gloves, turn them inside out, and make sure that you line the garbage can. Topical testosterone can affect every single woman in the house. And we had a case in the pharmacy, two cases of an entire family with women having psychiatric severe issues because of being contaminated with their husband's topical testosterone. So we don't want that to happen to you. Um, if men are willing, then the uh, best form, especially if they're over 50, is an injectable, a testosterone siphonate, and it's very individualized. And typically we do it every six days uh, just so that you don't go up and down too much. And again, individualized, don't just choose a level. All right, so we made it for the first five questions. Now here's the next five that we'll be going over. What nutrient is not made in the body that affects all hormone pathways? Why should you grow your own leafy greens? Getting adequate D3, which is a hormone, may, it should say why, but it should say may decrease this form of cancer by 50%. What food gets a bad name that lowers the risk of cancers and heart disease in men and women? And these three items may reduce hormonal symptoms and conditions in men and women. So keep those in mind as we go. So we're going to talk a little bit about Juice Plus. I've used Juice Plus over 21 years. It has over 30 different plant powders in capsules or chewables, and you can see it is actually food. So one of the things that's so wonderful about that is that I like more food-based things when possible, because for example, with this study by the National Cancer Institute published in the Journal of American Medical Association, 2011, old information. I can give you study after study like this. With 35,000 men, 55 years and older, vitamin E that was synthetic or part of a multivitamin increased their prostate risk by 17%, was not the food form, and vitamin E and selenium also increased the risk even more. Now, it's different if you have a clinical deficiency, but if you can use food forms first and then test by hair or urine for minerals, it's much more accurate. So I'm not against using any separate vitamin, mineral, and so on if you have medical deficiencies. Same with herbs, they work like medication, so you really need to have someone that has a lot of experience, know the right part, the right plant, not just using one brand or one kind, and then individualizing it to your risks, your age, male and female. So the Juice Plus also has a plant-based omega. Go back to the health literacy um, YouTube that I did, and it particularly talks about, again, why essential fatty acids are important. Essential means the body does not make them. So they are essential from every single age, from birth to death. And it's a shame that we do not get enough essential fatty acids. This particular one by Juice Plus is good to know about. If you don't want to test your omega fatty acids with our practice, then you can take this one because I've tested people and they can take two preventatively. And if you're over 50, I would recommend two in the morning, two at night. You can take it with or without food. You can open it, put it in a smoothie. You can also put it on your skin. But it is plant-based and it mainly increases the DHA, not DHEA, DHA of omega-3 fatty acid. And it has a little bit of EPA in there. And we know essential fatty acids are absolutely must be taken 
for decreasing in the systemic inflammation and affecting all the hormone pathways that we'll be talking about during the rest of this particular video. So very important. So number six, what nutrient is not made in the body that affects all hormone pathways? Omega-3s, essential fatty acids. One other thing that makes Juice Plus unique is it's food, not a vitamin. It has a nutrition facts label. It's gluten dairy free, and it has the NSF certification. Why this is important is it doesn't matter if it starts organic. When something gets into a truck, broken down into a capsule, tablet, or substance, you want to know, is it tested after it's manufactured for metals, for contaminants, for bacteria, for glyphosate, as we talked about in the health literacy. So we want to make sure that it doesn't have contaminants. NSF standard is the only certification that professional athletes should take. And I've worked with a lot of professional athletes as well as Olympians and collegiate one. So you don't want contamination in anything and forget athletes. What about us? What about our children? You know, we don't want anyone to have contaminants. It's the most researched nutritional product in the world. It has over 46 studies now in peer reviewed studies and in multiple different things. Now, you're going to see how this goes into eating fruits and vegetables and taking this as your foundation because of how it affects systemic inflammation, metabolism of different things like cholesterol, LDL. Those are steroid molecules. So often someone will get high levels of cholesterol, not from their diet, but from their hormones while being out of balance. So it's very important to look at all these things. And we know it reduces oxidative stress. We also know that it's absorbed by the body, which is very important. Anything that you take, you want to make sure it's making a difference. Okay. So really helpful. So when we look at this, we're going to again look at how things combine. But when we look at breast cancer, this is a particular uh, genetic test that I do by finger stick that I think every single woman should do. You only have to do it once. It's not very expensive. I think it's $325 one-time test. And it tells you what impact your genes have on your risk for breast cancer. What's so nice about it that's different though, and this is an example of one of mine, which is a very high impact is that it's really important. It tells you what lifestyle things specifically you could do to help offset that. Remember when we talked about epigenetics, not expressing it. When we talked in the health literacy, we talked about not having tumors grow. If they start to grow, how we turn it back off. This is one of the ways is to identify it and it's through food and lifestyle. If you haven't heard about the China study, it is one of the best books ever written. And it shows how unmodified, unbleached soy, as well as plant foods can reverse or prevent different types of cancers as well as heart disease. It is a fabulous book. And if you don't like to read, then you can always YouTube uh, Dr. Colin Campbell. He has some videos, they're fabulous. So it's really compelling to understand. And of course you want clean soy. So one of the uh, questions that you're going to um, have on number nine is what food gets a bad name that lowers the risk of cancers and heart disease? That's soy. Now, when we talk about cancers and fruits and vegetables and so on, what's important is cancer is caused by DNA and free radical stress, not hormones. Again, isn't it fascinating? We are not taught the right things, you know, and we're certainly not taught how to prevent them properly or to how to hopefully express it or if you get something, how to heal properly and not get it again. But the human DNA study using Juice Plus shields your cells. After 80 days, there was a 66% reduction in DNA damage. Hormones can make, just like sugar, just like additives, just like glyphosate can make cancer grow and tumors grow, but it does not cause it. So it's really important to understand that. This is my by far favorite movie still of all time because it's not a feel bad movie. It is not there to make you try to be a vegetarian or do this or that. And it gives you compelling reasons, whether you're a professional athlete, a fireman, or uh, just a happy person that wants to stay healthy and how food can change your outcome of your physiology. And you get one body. So I don't care who you are. Poor, poor health affects everybody and it's a butterfly effect. It doesn't matter if you have money. It doesn't matter if you're not working anymore. You want to take care of your body. So Forks Over Nice is a fabulous movie you can get on Netflix. I watch it every year. I'm a registered dietitian. And so and it's very, very important to keep motivated and find really good resources. So there are other contributors of cancers. And we, we talked about some of this, you know, when again, when people are just don't believe they think it's just hormones. Again, the hormones can fuel it if it's, you know, too high or, or you have a higher propensity and your 
lifestyle isn't good. But outside of glyphosate, which we talked about another time, which is 41% increase of lymphoma, which are typically on lawns, fruits and vegetables, and packaged foods, especially grains and wines, we want to be aware of those. And then we want to look at the World Health Organization, and they classify things as different classes. Group 1 carcinogens are known to cause cancer. Some of those are strong evidence, such as meat, processed meat. And when we're talking about processed meat, we're talking about hot dogs and nitrate and salami and those kind of things. Guess what? So is alcohol. So the National Institute of Health has all sorts of incredible uh, things about cancer trends and progress reports you can look up. And then I give you an example of glyphosate and the relationship to lymphoma. So again, we're talking about environment, things we control, and foods we can control. So we have a lot more empowerment than we are ever taught to stay healthy. Alcohol is a, is a class one carcinogen. And we're talking about hormones. We, we talked already about uh, inflammation and, and systemic inflammation turns on all disease. And we talked about it in health literacy in particular, but it alters metabolism, especially estrogens, estradiol in particular. And again, remember when estradiol goes up for a man, that increases prostate cancer, that increases urinary changes, heart health, and for women, also a whole bag of problems that contribute to a lot of conditions, symptoms, and diseases. So that's one of the reasons that when we're talking about glyphosate and foods that I like to teach people to grow their tower garden. The Color office, if you're interested or the person that invited you, we've got a home tower garden right next to our refrigerator, so it's very convenient. And there's baby greens or herbs you can grow on the top. And then there's a flex that I grow all year round in my office because we eat a lot of greens. We have a salad every day or we add greens to our smoothies or have green smoothies. And what's so nice about them is we know they're glyphosate free, contaminant free. It's very hard, even when you buy organic, that the average lettuce is touched 26 times that's organic before it reaches your plate. That is a problem again. I don't care if we're talking about viruses or we're talking about bacteria and food poisoning and, and of course, contaminants. The other thing is, is that when we look at this, it's very easy, it's hydroponic. So it saves water, it saves space, it yields more, it pays for itself in six months to a year, or to a year. and my flex, I've had 11 years now, and I've only replaced one thing. So it's absolutely fabulous. You can also add pieces on it and make it higher if you really get into it. I am not a grower, I'm gonna be honest, but I can grow the tower gardens and I love them now. I feel so good eating them as well as proud that I can give my family really good greens. Uh, when we talked about the health literacy, I always teach about looking up the, the 12 dirty dozen foods that you avoid and buy organic or grow and nine of them you can grow in the tower garden. And then of course there's the clean 15. So you know what foods you might not have to buy organic but always wash the outside in the night. So again, why are those fruits and vegetables important to hormones? Remember I said, we're gonna keep connecting them so it's because we want contaminant free and fruits and vegetables, we know the ingredients and mechanism of how it works. First of all, it's thousands of phytochemicals. Second of all, it's indole 3 carbonyl IC3 and, and DIM, diindole methane. They're found particularly in cruciferous vegetables. They block excess estrogens, estradiol in particular, and the bad, the bad estrogen, estrone. They improve testosterone and estrogen metabolism all three estrogens. So it's very, very important again. When we look at different sources of powders, I highly recommend you take two red, two green, two purple, four orange of the omegas if you're over 50, or if you want to test, then we can be more specific, and then add at least one smoothie a day with a complete powder. What's unique about the complete powder is that we know that it has uh, seven particular uh, grams of the right phyto chemicals that are in the books with soy. It is water washed, it is unbleached, and it has six different plant proteins that the MD Anderson Cancer Center and University of Texas study showed it changed some of the quality and status markers in ovarian patients and esophageal cancers. They found a different, um, and head and neck cancers found different changes in cell proliferation and support with those antioxidants. And so in the study, they used one complete powder packet, or you can use scoopers. And then again, I've done a, a smoothie all my life since I was 15, actually. And when I found the Juice Plus Complete, I've used it ever since, which has been 21 years. So, and no matter what, at least one scoop or one 
um, single serve that you can open up and you can keep those anywhere and even shakes with water really well. And then you can take your capsules. And so it's a really important fact when we're looking at phytoestrogens that if you get quality soy, again, when we look at the data, it's the lowest risk of prostate, heart disease, and cancers. So please be open to that. So we know that why should you grow your own leafy greens? Because of herbicides, risks, and pesticides, and glyphosate, as well as food poisoning, and you want a lot more fruits and vegetables in your life. The complete protein also is one of the only plant proteins, gluten and dairy free, and again, six different plant protein, it's not just soy, that has a perfect score. So again, people always ask me almost all the time, they take these other things, and I'm like, why? Why don't you want what's the best that also has medical studies? It also tastes fantastic. A lot of plant uh, proteins do not taste very good. When we look, if you need more protein like I do, I'm 56, gonna be 57 next month, That and I am an avid workout person and I have got to have more protein. So instead of doing two or four of the complete, I do one complete with one scoop of form twice a day for my breakfast and for after my workout. So what's nice about the perform, it's 25 grams of plant protein. Again, it's the soy form. It's got some other naturally occurring B vitamins for people that want more energy. It has the NSF certification for athletes. It's vegan, gluten-free, non-dairy, and non-GMO. So it's really great and uh, very low in carbs and only six grams of sugar. So it's pretty great. So you want to incorporate more vegetables and more healthy fats in your diet because of how it directly affects the hormone pathways, all three estrogens, and the adrenals, DHA, cortisol, and I can go on and on. Add a vegetable to every meal or snack is what I recommend. Add it to smoothies and make stuffed salads, we call it our house, which means we put all six different leafy greens or five or four different ones. And then I'll put different vegetables one day, like four different squashes another day, three different onions. I use scallops, wild salmon, things like that. I add, if we add eggs or we, we make uh, omelets, we make lots of vegetables. If you can buy cut up ones, if you don't like doing it yourself, you can add it to your smoothies, have it as a snack, you know, um, blend um, things into foods. Like when I make my turkey meatballs, I put in there a whole zucchini grated, I'll put onions, garlic, and tomatoes. And it's fabulous. I don't have to use any breading or any breadcrumbs when you use zucchini because it makes things moist. Everybody loves them. And then things like the best fats are extra virgin olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, and wild salmon. Of course, if you can tolerate them because how they affect the hormone pathways and they're part of the Mediterranean diet, which is the most proven diet that we went over in the health literacy lecture again. So again, you wanna go back to that if you didn't watch it. So, and we talked about men and multivitamins. How about women and how fruits and vegetables affect them? They show a high fiber diet, which is 25 to 35 grams a day. And adolescents lower their breast cancer risk. The average person gets 10 grams, not 25 to 35. It was a 90,000 women study. And they showed if you do it before the age of 20, there's about a 24% reduction in cancer and a 12 to 19% if you start later. So we want to get 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. You want to at least add one vegetable to every meal and snack. Start your morning with 10 to 15 gram smoothie with high fiber. The complete has seven grams. If you add some greens or some frozen berries, it's very easy to get it. Or people with oatmeal, they'll do dry oats. I'll put their complete shake in there and then they're at the, the 10 to 15 grams. Or again, take greens from your uh, tower garden. So really, really important. So again, there are significant research of how to help hormone pathways and prevent hormonal and other forms of cancer. The complete bars are really great too. They're 10 grams of protein, five grams of fiber, very affordable. They're about 170 calories each and contaminant free, gluten and dairy free. And if you absolutely do want soy free, have an allergy or something, then the tart cherry is also even soy free. So it's really hard to find good things. So absolutely, again, if you're not gonna grab, you know, some hummus and carrots or celery and peanut butter or an apple, then for goodness sake, have things like this in your car so you're not grabbing pretzels and crap so that you're getting good grains, you're getting the fiber and the protein you need every day and contaminant free. So we've talked about three estrogens, testosterone, progesterone, DHA, adrenal hormones, 
And now we're going to talk about vitamin D as in dog. Ideal for men, in my medical opinion, is 65 to 100 and for women, 75 to 100. No matter what, if you're a child or anybody, you want at least 50. Some labs say 20 to 80. Some even say under 30 until someone's medically deficient. I'm just going to tell you, I've been recommending this for 30 years. It is not new because of COVID and I'm going to show you all the importance. If you test your vitamin D, we can do a blood spot test at our office. If your doctor won't test it. And then if you know your level, then the average person needs a thousand IUs to 75,000 IUs. See the difference? So I don't recommend more than one to 2,000 IUs a day by colocociferol unless you test because everybody's so different. And I've had children that need 10,000. I've had children that have needed a thousand. So everybody's different. And you can't guess by looking at someone. It is a hormone, not a vitamin. We have said that all along my whole entire history involved in nutrition. However, it only became really known as a hormone by Mayo Clinic, Harvard, and so on around 2005 and after. So we're really behind. So it's a very, very important hormone. So what about other things? I could go on and on about vitamin D. I could talk about it all day, in fact. But let's look at 2,000 IUs of vitamin D, that's without any testing, decreased colon cancer by 50%. So that's question number eight, getting adequate D3 decreases this form of cancer by 50%. It may colon cancer. High circulating levels of vitamin D also lower the risk of MS. Amazing studies that if vitamin D is low before the age of 20, it's hundreds times higher risk of autoimmune, especially MS. So it's just a shame. And this was an American Medical Association. And again, I could go on and on on vitamin D. It's the number one factor for bone health, not calcium, it's vitamin D. And adequate vitamin D stimulates serotonin, the main neurotransmitter in our gut, not in our brain. It's mainly made in our gut. And it directly is in the pathway of serotonin and melatonin that affects our moods, our sleep, and our well-being. So vitamin D is extremely important. You can't go to the other pieces until you have the foundation intact. Okay. Vitamin D and respiratory infections. I picked this particular study for this lecture just because it's 2017 before COVID. We actually know that acute respiratory infection uh, kills 2.5 million or more people a year, and of course, way more after COVID. And what we looked at is when we looked at multiple meta-analysis of peer-reviewed studies, vitamin D supplementation reduced the risk of acute respiratory infection among all participants who are vitamin D deficient. So you can't take it as soon as you get sick. You have to have it in your system. And again, vitamin D is a hormone. So it affects your estradiol. It affects your insulin. It affects your thyroid. You've got, and your immune system, you've got to have vitamin D. So the last one we're going to talk about today is thyroid health. Thyroid health is really sad to me because in the United States, about every third person, especially women are on thyroid medication. And when I knew a really great, who just retired thyroid endocrinologist that was trained in Chicago and in France, he agreed with me. It's an imbalanced hormones, imbalanced vitamin D and chronic stress that causes thyroid health. He said, you know, when he goes to other countries, it's very random. So again, our diets, our stress, and our lack of vitamin D and the right balance of hormones is what's causing thyroid dysfunction. The problem is almost everybody that gets diagnosed with a thyroid dysfunction, they look at TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which is very important, the functioning of your thyroid, but they, and maybe T4, or free T4, but they often don't look at free T3 or the antibodies. You have to look at all of them. And why would every single adult infant child need Synthroid or Levoxyl? We've got to individualize. If you've got siblings, if you've got friends, our fingerprints are different, we're all different. That's why I really at a young age got interested in this field. It wasn't just because of my family's obesity and unhealthiness. It was because it never made sense to me. Everybody needs individual care. We're all different down to how we think, to our fingerprint, to our physiology. So with thyroids, what's really important is they found by the National Institute of Health when they were going around looking at blood sugar for women and children, half were missed for thyroid autoimmune disease because no one ever tested their thyroid globulin antibodies or their prostatase antibodies. So there's hypothyroidism where the TSH gets high or there's hyperthyroidism when the TSH is too low or the thyroid antibodies are high. They're different treatments. 
So that's why often when someone gets diagnosed with a thyroid problem, they're excited. They think they're going to go on thyroid medication and all of a sudden feel better. And actually often they don't feel better at all. And that's because they still haven't gotten the vitamin D right, the hormones right, or the right tests to make sure that their thyroid's in balance. So please take care of your thyroid properly. If the doctor won't do it, we can do it by finger stick and help you navigate through that. And there are, when someone is not on thyroid medication, and once in a while I can get people off thyroid medication, there are a few over-the-counter things that can do, but you still have to get your essential fatty acids. You still have to have your vitamin D. We still have to know what your hormones are to manage thyroid health integratively. I didn't say alternative, integratively. You might still need medication, but maybe we can find the right medication for you for all of your markers. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. So when we talk about the very last question, it was number 10, these three items may reduce hormonal symptoms and conditions in men and women, fruits, vegetables, and fiber. So to conclude, we want to individualize. You want a strong nutrition foundation that includes vitamin D, essential fatty acids, omega-3s, and juice plus. You want to take juice plus and things that are contaminant-free, proven, and work with a professional that's had thousands of patients, not someone that dabbles in hormones. It's just a disaster. With hormones, you want to have the least risk, you want to individualize, you want to test, and you've got to retest. You can't retest every few years. You've got to retest sometimes two to three months, four or five times within the first few years before we go to one to two times a year. Only take proven over-the-counter therapies. For God's sake, don't be picking things off the internet and things that are in a commercial and Instagram. Please be smarter than that and individualize your treatment. Be honest with yourself. Are you drinking too much alcohol? Are you having poor sleep? Do you just believe anyone can get cancer? Again, you want, of course, anyone can, but I mean, again, that you can be more empowered and still, if you have bumps in the road, that you can feel better. Look at your lifestyle. What can you change? Look for more community. Well, that's why I love our community and why I love educating like this for free exercise. You want to strength train. You want it, that strength training helps your testosterone. It helps your muscle maintenance. It helps your bones. It helps everything. Your self-esteem. You want to slow down, especially in the evening with low lights and not having TV. And you want to have less multitasking and get outside. You probably hear there's some dolphins and birds going right in front of me right now as I'm speaking. So that was good timing. So if you need extra resources, please remember to go to our website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com under education. I have other videos. Often I do other videos that aren't on my website. And then you need to go to our YouTube channel, Valerie Early Sayer, and uh, become a member. And then you'll get notices whenever there's a new video. So there's a lot of times I do videos that takes a long time for my tech person to get on or it doesn't get on, but I can always publish it on YouTube. You can go to soulsoaringbook.com if you're interested more in energy medicine. I'll be doing some workshops next year that are more related to that. If that's interested in part of your healing process and staying healthy, then you can always email ncbteam at nutritionconnectionbalance.com and my staff will make sure they answer questions and so on. I also have things like the thyroid test, the vitamin D test, the hormone clinics, all those are on our website. You can order there. And if you need more information, you can absolutely contact our office through the NCB team at nutritionconnectionbalance.com. Our phone number is 850 227-7931. You can also take a look more for more education on our Instagram at NCB Health, the Instagram Soul Soaring Book, my YouTube, which is probably the most helpful, Valerie Early Sayer, and then Facebook, NCB Nutrition Connection Balance, and Valerie Sayer Soul Soaring. So I hope you've enjoyed the lecture today. I have enjoyed spending time with you. I'm very passionate about keeping you healthy and hormones in balance. And I wish you the most wonderful, healthy, vibrant life that you can have. So I look forward to meeting you if I haven't already. Take care.